Hey, thanks for joining us as we celebrate the Lord's birth with a time of reflection and a time of communion and lighting the Christ candle tonight. I hope that you and your family are really going to enjoy this aspect of our celebration of our Lord's birth. And we're coming to you today from the Bryant Morris Farm in Stockton, Alabama. You know, when you and I think about the birth of Christ, we naturally think about a stable. But in our culture, this is where we picture a stable being as Christ was born in the place of the animals and was laid into a manger, a feeding trough. But actually in the first century world in the place of Bethlehem it was most likely a stable that was hewn out of rock or some type of building where the animals were kept at night. Either way our Lord and Savior, the King of the universe, came into this world in a very lowly manner unassuming but yet the prince of peace the king of kings and the lord of lords join us as we come to the lord's table we reflect in scriptures and we light the christ candle in the same region there were some shepherds staying out on the fields keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the lord stood suddenly shone around them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened but the Lord said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with him an angel of multi with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men whom he is well pleased. Peace. We live in a world of conflict, chaos, and circumstances that do not give us peace. And peace is not the absence of conflict or chaos or our circumstances, but in we have peace in the presence of God. And when we come tonight to light the Christ candle, the center candle, it reminds us that Jesus is the center of our lives, the center of our faith, the center of our Christmas, the center of our church, and in Him can we truly have peace. As Christ's candle is the center candle of this arrangement, of this Advent circle, so Christ is to be the center of our Christmas the center of our hope, the center of our faith, the center of our lives. I pray that we have done so in making him the Lord of our lives as we celebrate the Christ of Christmas, this day and every day throughout this year. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 through 7, gives us the stated purpose for Jesus and as well as other places as well. 
In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5, it reads this, Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In whole burnt offerings and sacrifice for sin, you have taken no pleasure. And then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. The purpose of Jesus' birth is to do the will of God. The prophets have foretold of the birth of Jesus. And a tremendous work by O.S. Hawkins reminds us that we see Jesus throughout the entire Old Testament. We see it in the perfect offering of Abel in Genesis. We see it in Isaac as he loaded the wood on his back and went up to Mount Moriah where his father Abraham would sacrifice. And God would stop that sacrifice. But then Jesus would take wood upon his back in the form of a cross and go to Golgotha. And God the Father would not stop that sacrifice. We see it throughout the whole Old Testament and different prophets and, and different images of the coming of Jesus. And when God gave his son a human body and brought him in human form to be born of the Holy Spirit with Mary to carry him, Joseph to be his earthly father, God was fulfilling in the fullness of time of Galatians 4.4. You gave me a body, the scripture said, a body that would be born literally to die. After Jesus showed us the very heart and face of God, a body that would preach the gospel, that would show the very love of God. And as Jesus said on a couple of occasions, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So when you see the love of Christ, the compassion of Christ, You've seen the love and the compassion that God has for us. So as you celebrate the birth of our Savior, it is my hope that you will understand and I will understand afresh and just refresh ourselves in the truth of the moment that Jesus came to really live to die for our sins. As we come tonight to celebrate the birth, we come to celebrate love. We come to celebrate the peace. We come to celebrate joy. We come to celebrate hope. Jesus said in that passage, I have come to do your will, O God. What a model for us. God has too given us a body and existence in this life. As Christ is our Savior, who would say to the Father, I have come to do your will, O God. Shouldn't that be our expression as well? Lord, I'm here to do your will. So as we celebrate Christmas, let's purpose in our hearts. Say, Lord, as we come to this celebration and we begin a new year, Lord, refresh, rekindle, and reignite my heart to do your will, O oh God. Let's pray. Father, so great a love I cannot comprehend, but so great a love I accept. And Lord, as we think about the lowly estate of which our Savior was born, with the animals in a manger the elite did not come the royalty did not come but the shepherds in the field and others gathered around to celebrate a tremendous birth of the king father help us remember his words but I have come to do the will of the Father. And Lord, may we purpose in our hearts this Christmas 
God, I want to do your will, not only today, but every day. Strengthen me to live in your power and do your will. In Jesus' name I pray. At this portion, I want to ask you and your family to please take the cup that you picked up at First Baptist during the week, and it's a self-contained, prepackaged cup with the wafer and the cup. So if you'll pick that up and have that prepared, and, and I like to do this, if you'll go ahead and, and just uh, pull back that top layer at this time. Having pulled back that seal, I want to remind you about what the scriptures teach us and tell us of the night that Jesus was gathered in the upper room with those closest to him, his disciples. And he changed the meaning of a meal that they had taken from their youth, of the Passover meal. And he said, a new covenant I'm giving you tonight. They were celebrating the old covenant, but this is a new covenant I made, and this is in my blood. And the scriptures tell us that when he had broken bread, he gave thanks. So let us give thanks. Father, as we are in this place, gathered with people we love, we thank you for the great love for us. I thank you for the body that was born into this world I thank you for the life that you lived in perfection so that you would be our sin sacrifice. I thank you for the body that would end up being broken on Calvary's cruel cross for our sin. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And after he had prayed, he took the bread and said, This is my body, which is broken. After he had taken the bread, he also took the cup on that night. And you know, to think about in, in this setting, for me to, to be in this place, in, in our, our barn, our reminder of the, the state that Christ was born into, in the manger, it reminds me of how really the Lord's life was commemorated by a lot of things in between, but it began in a stable and it ended with the table of telling his disciples there was a new covenant and this time it would be in his blood by his blood that would be shed and so tonight as we take the cup we also want to give thanks so will you bow with me yet again father in the same manner you tell us you took the cup and told us that this is the blood that is spilled on our behalf and Lord, we know from the sacrificial system that without the spilling of blood, there could not be the remission of sin. So Father, I thank you for allowing Jesus and your perfect plan to come be the blood sacrifice for our sins. Jesus, I thank you for taking the way and the weight of sin and guilt from us if we believe and trust in you. Tonight we take the cup and we commemorate the blood that was shed on Calvary for our sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us in this part of communion. It's very special to me always is in any way or any manner in which we take it on the fifth Sunday of our church at the time of the resurrection Sunday on Christmas Eve and may it remind you and I again you're cared for and you're loved and God has given a great sacrifice that you would be in a relationship with him he invites you he desires you and he loves you